Hello and thanks for watching this video on how to add actions or reports to an existing screen. So many times we want to add certain actions. For example, being able to, while I'm creating this purchase receipt document, being able to look up other information or maybe run a report. So to get started, we get a customization project together. So we'll hit the plus button, we'll give it a name, add actions PR, we'll hit the save button. This allows us to create the customization placeholder and then click to open it. Now the first thing we need to do is add an existing screen in the software. So we'll search for our purchase receipt. Click OK. And now that we have our screen, if we expand on our purchase order form screen and we go to actions, we can hit the plus button and add a brand new action. So the first action we're going to add is the ability to maybe search on AP bills for this particular vendor. So we'll give it an action name. We'll give it a nicer display name. We'll tell it the action type. So in this case, it's going to be navigation search records. And our destination will be the bills screen or generic inquiry. So PL. We'll let it pop up as opposed to opening it up in the same tab. We don't want that. We could do a new tab if we wanted to, but we'll do a pop-up window. Now over here, we have the ability to open up a dialog box. So this might be useful if we wanted to have the end user fill in some fields of information that could be passed along to the next screen, to the destination screen. But in this case, we're not going to do that for this one. And then the processing screen itself, this allows us to take this particular action and put it into a process action screen. Now, again, we're searching through records, so this is not applicable here. Now, parameters that we're going to navigate with, we want to pass along the vendor receipt. We want to pass along the vendor ID. So if we scroll down, in this case, we're going to search for the vendor, and we're going to pass that over using vendor. So that'll be our filter. And we'll click OK. So that's the first one. That'll allow us to search bills. So we'll publish this. Now you can see the customization has been published. If we go back to our purchase receipt and refresh, you now see this menu item, search bills, at the top. So now the reason it's showing up here at the top, if we go back to our customization, if we open up the action name, the reason it shows on the top level is because that's what's selected here as a default. But we could put it under the Actions or the Inquiries menu or the Reports menu. So let's go back. And when we hit Search Bills, you now see Acumatica passes along the vendor ID and gives us the result of the bills that match. So how does that work? Let's take a look at that customization action again. And what we did here under navigation parameters, over here under parameter are all the fields that are part of this destination screen generic inquiry. So we've said this is what the vendor is going to be. And we're passing the value from our screen vendor from the summary screen of the purchase receipt. So that's how that works. And when we click OK again, if we go back, this is the set of bills that are a match. So let's now add a report. So if we go back to our purchase receipt, right now we have these three reports in there, but we want to add another one. We'll go back to our customization. We'll hit the plus button to create a brand new one. We'll give it a name. And now for our destination screen, we'll look for our label inventory item labels. Now this is a built-in label form that's already in Acumatica. Having said that, if we created our own report, we added to the site map, that would show up here as well. So now we have a report that's running. Here's the name. I'll give it a little space here. 
and it needs an action name with no space. And now we need to pass the parameter from our purchase receipt over so that it returns the correct results. So if we take a look, again, this is the report. The report looks for two different fields to pass over to. So the first one is doc type. So that will get from our purchase receipt under type. We'll tab down again, and then the next one is the receipt number. We'll look down for the receipt number, and there it is there. And then we'll click OK. So now we have a second action here. So we'll publish. And now our customization is published. We'll minimize this and refresh our purchase receipt. And now when we go to reports, you'll notice it's not here. So we made a mistake. So let's go back to our customization. Let's open up our new action. And we notice the toolbar folder is set to top level. So let's change that to reports. We'll click OK and we'll try again. Now our customization is published. We'll minimize this and we'll refresh our purchase receipt. And because we still didn't see it, instead I logged out this time and I went back in again. There may be a security related issue with this report. So we'll try it again and we'll go to our purchase receipts. Open one up and go to reports and now we can see the inventory labels. When we open that up, Acumatica automatically runs the inventory label report for that particular purchase receipt. So that's just scratching the surface about actions. Moving ahead, we'll start to get into more in-depth types of customizations, no code customizations you can do using the Acumatica actions, fields, conditions, workflows, and dialog boxes area of Acumatica, which is all brand new over the last couple of versions. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.